Do you think the government's net zero target of 43% by 2030 is enough to reduce Australia's emissions impact? Thank you, Annie. Chris Bowen. Well, thanks, Annie, for the question. And, of course, we need to reduce emissions as fast as possible because the next eight years is what really counts to, for holding the world for as close as possible to 1.5 degrees. So I hope we can do better than 43, uh, and we'll try to. But also, I do need to make this point. 43 is actually ambitious for our country because we are starting too late. And when you start late, you have to go harder and faster. And so we have 86 months between now and 2030. 2030 sounds to some people like it's a long way away. Actually, it's just tomorrow in terms of this massive transformation that we have to undertake to get to 43%. 43% reduction would be the biggest economic transformation our country's seen since the war. To give you an idea of the sort of things we need to do to meet it, we need to put 60 million solar panels on roofs between now and 2030. That's as much as we've done in the last 10 years again in the next eight. We need to put 40 wind turbines up a month. Obviously, that's more than a wind turbine a day. This is a massive task. We'll do it. We've enshrined the target in law. But I do just want to under, underline just how ambitious 43 actually is. I respect people who say, you know, we should do more. And as I said, the country and the government will be working hard to do better. But starting in 2022, uh, because of nine years of deli deni deni deli <laughs> delay and denial <laughs> up until this point, uh, means that we're starting very late to get to 43%. Chris, you say 43 is ambitious, but you were more ambitious before. You took a more ambitious target to the election in 2019. Then you reduced it to 43% at the last election. Why take off 2% if, you, if we need to get there quickly? Starting three years later, Stan. Starting three years later means that you have to recalibrate your policies. And also, I make this point, 43% is not just a target, it's the modelled impact of our policies. So it's one thing to set a target. You know, with all due respect, that's the easy part. Mm. Then my job as the minister and the government's job is to move the levers to achieve it. That's the hard part. And so we've got to move our renewable energy system to 83% renewables by 2030 off a low base to start with. That's a massive change. We took a big step towards that yesterday with our big announcement of new transmission lines between Tasmania and the mainland, which will see Tasmania move to 200 per cent renewable. Yeah, I want to get to that a bit later as uh, well. But that yeah. just, that's the sort of change we need. We need to build 10,000 kilometres of transmission lines between mm. now and 2030. That's the massive task we have undertaken. As I said, if you were starting in 2010 or 2013 or 2015, sure. Um, but when you're starting in 2022, after nine years of delay and denial, you are really leaving it very late. But that's where we are. The best time to start would have been 10 years ago or 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Mm. We've wasted a decade, so we don't have a second to waste now. Um, Ross Garner, if you look around the states, of course, Victorian government's now announcing that it's setting a much higher target, looking at, you know, up to 90 per cent, I think, by 2035, and around 60 or 70, I think, by, by 2030, 65 um, per cent by 2030. Is there a question, though, just to go to Chris Bowen's point about ambition, a gap between our targets and our capability? Not a gap between targets and capability. There is a gap between targets and uh, the policies we've got on the table mm. right now. The Victorian point, uh, that's, that's reduction in emissions in mm. power generation, mm. not in the whole economy. And with the 43% we're talking about the whole economy. Things are going pretty well uh, in terms of policy on the power e economy and the announcement that uh, the Minister made today is a very important step. Uh, and over the last couple of months, we've had very strong statements uh, with the Government of Queensland, the Government of Western Australia, going effectively to zero uh, coal generation by the mid-30s, mid uh, a very strong statement by Victoria today. So there's a lot of momentum there. There's a lot of other things that we have to do. Uh, to first to make sure that, that all goes mm. smoothly and without hiccups, and uh, the government's doing a lot of those things. Uh, secondly, do that right, and we can go a lot further. Uh, but I'm, but 43 percent is within the range of developed countries. It, it is, puts is us it in ambitious the game. enough? Would you, if you were giving advice and you've been in situations where you've done just that, would you have been aiming higher? I think I, I would have, but 43% puts us in the credible range of developed countries. And I actually think the government will... I think Australia will get further 
uh, through a succession of Sorry, policies. Sorry, I just wanted to jump in on that point about, you know, developed nations and what they're doing. And I think Australia calling itself a lucky country, developed nation, should really be leading the way. We know that we have the means, we have the resources to actually um, be this renewable energy superpower, and our emissions targets are 43%. And that only accounts for domestic emissions. That doesn't even account for the fact that we're one of the biggest exporters of coal. And then whenever other countries like India and China have emissions. When other countries like India and China have emissions, we just keep blaming them. But we're actually um, exporting the source. We're exporting the coal. We're mining the coal here, and we fail to account for our responsibility. We've seen the Victorian government announce 95%. We see that the Climate Council is saying that 75% um, emissions reductions by 2030, and we only have 43. That's simply not good enough. Oh. Back to you, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to you, Chris, Chris Bowen, on that, and particularly the point that, you know, we're not getting out of fossil fuels entirely, are we? And there are more projects uh, on the drawing board, more that we're going to be developing. How does that work when we're trying to hit more ambitious targets, as you've said? Well, all of those projects which people talk about um, have to go through very rigorous assessment, including against our new safeguards reforms, which uh, will require large emitters as a matter of law to reduce their emissions, and we'll have more to say about the detailed design, including new entrants. But uh, to Varshay's point, you know, I understand the point she makes, but also we are, we are accountable for our own emissions. We can't say, oh, the cars are made in Japan, so we don't need to reduce our emissions here in Australia out of transport. We don't say that. We would never say that. What we do need to do is prepare our communities for change, and we've been doing that. We need to create new jobs in regions that mine coal and produce uh, coal-fired power. Our policies do that so that we have a transition, or as I prefer to call it, a transformation, which is just in every term, uh, just for everyone, and so that we're creating those jobs because the majority of our trading partners are committed to net zero. The vast majority of the people who buy coal from us are committed to net zero by 2050 or 2060, so we need to be very clear with coal communities that change is coming and we will create the new jobs and the new energy. The mm. 604,000 wanna... jobs that our policies will create, five out of six of them are in the regions. That's important because I want to make sure this transformation is just for everyone. We've got a question coming up about jobs. I'm going to bring Yun Jiang in here as well, Yun, because, of course, China is also the world's biggest emitter. Um, it's looking to, to uh, its target of 2060 net zero emissions, but it's also realised now, after having more blackouts, um, that it's going to be relying on fossil fuels for a lot longer and building more coal-fired power stations as well. How do we, as a globe, achieve that when we have China still with a heavy reliance uh, and with geopolitical tensions impeding meeting, meeting these targets as well? Yeah, I'll just address the geopolitical tension first. We're talking about, you know, developing technology uh, potential for Australia to become a technological superpower. Um, well, the fact is that Australia is a relatively small country. Uh, our population is relatively small. Um, the, our investment in R&D, research and development, is only 1% of the globe. So most of our technology will be from outside mm. Australia. But what's happening uh, now, a very worrying trend for me personally, is I'm seeing a technological decoupling between the United States and China where the United States is trying to maintain as much lead in technology as possible while somewhat constraining China's development in technology. So what's going to happen is that um, there will be a two-track of the technological development that's highly inefficient um, in terms of uh, advancing technology. Um, and I am very worried about implication for um, green technology from that. Yeah, uh, I'm all for uh, Russia's uh, renewable energy superpower, and uh, <laughs> just written a book about it. And uh, if if we do you're that, you're allowed. You're allowed one plug, Ross. Yeah. And that, that's it. it is the <laughs> ABC. <laughs> and, and if we do that right, uh, we'll go quickly from minus 43 to minus a big number, and then we'll keep going, and we'll not only reduce our own emissions to zero, but we'll help the rest of the world reduce their emissions mm. to zero, including China. Uh, I think China is deeply committed to the zero emissions by 2060, and when you've got such a carbon-intensive economy, mm. that's a big job. They actually have to get there a bit earlier, but it's a huge job. They're going to find it easier if we're using our renewable energy 
to turn iron ore into iron, well, so they don't have to do it there, burning coal with a lot of emissions. We, and we have to be able to talk to each other. We're going to get to that issue a little bit later as well.